to get this seminar started. Uh, hello, good afternoon everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Shalom, konswasiastu, nama budaya. How are you all today? I hope everyone here is doing fine, healthy, safe, and of course, stay at home. I believe that all of you here come from different places. I don't know about the situation over there, but me, myself, I come from Batam. It is a small city in Indonesia. And I would like to be honest that the whole COVID-19 situation here is actually not really good. And I sincerely hope that everything will get better soon so that all of us can go back to our normal activities. So please don't ever forget to wear your mask and always wash your hands. First of all, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Amalia Farah. You can call me Amal. I am here as your moderator today. I am a rising second year student of Faculty of Law in Universitas Brawijaya Indonesia. I am also a part of the Committees of International Law Student Association, or you can call it ILSA, Chapter Universitas Brawijaya, who is holding this event right now. Well, maybe as you can see that I am actually quite nervous because this is my first time being a moderator. So please bear with me. Uh, I will look out for your care. <laughs> Um, I suppose that all of you here have already perceived the rules of procedures that we have sent you through our WhatsApp groups. So I hope that everyone have already read it, but if you haven't, please read it because it is really important. Um, second of all, I would like to admit that this is such a big honor for me to become a moderator with you guys here in this amazing event. Because this event is a really big opportunity for all of us to keep improving ourselves by not going anywhere, just staying at home. Um, all right, I would like to tell you too that this webinar is also going live in our YouTube channel. So maybe uh, 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 the part of participants are not joining in this Zoom because they are watching this webinar through our YouTube live. And before we get right into the main of this agenda, I would like to enlighten you guys a little bit about the topic that we're going to have today so that everyone here will not be confused or feel lost when the speakers are explaining their topics. So most of, all, most of us college students uh, probably are facing uh, the same struggles because we keep wondering, what are we going to do? after we graduate from college. We keep worrying about whether we're going to get a job or we keep thinking, if we wanna get a job, then what do we have to do? What do we have to prepare? And we keep asking, what kind of person are they looking for? Or am I enough? Will I fit to their job position? So today in this amazing opportunities, I would like to share the most wanted questions with you guys. So please stay until the end and do not miss out. Uh, the next will be, we will hear some welcoming remarks from our committees who have been working so hard on this project until this very day. Uh, so right now, I would like to present to you our beloved project officer who has been leading this project on the first day to, to this day. He is Mr. Jordi Rizaldo. Please, I present you your time to deliver your opening remarks. Thank you, moderator, for the change. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Shalom, om swastiastu, namo buddhaya. First of all, let us give thanks to our almighty God, because by his blessing and by his grace, today we can still be gathering here through these Zoom media meetings, even in the middle of this pandemic situation. And then, with our utmost respect, we would like to give some welcome to our both amazing and honorable speaker, Mr. Glenn Wijaya and Mr. Awzan Syedi Abdulate. It is really great to see them here and join us today. And also, we would like to welcome all of the participants who already joined this webinar. It is very great to see you guys to see all of you here. And thank you for all of your enthusiasm and all your particip participation. Eventually, this event can't be complete without all of your, all of your participation. 
And then, before going further, let me introduce myself. Hello everyone, my name is Jordi Rizaldo, and today I present as a project officer of this event and as a representative of all the committees who are organizing this event. And so, the main topic that we will discuss on this webinar today is about self-branding. And further, our discussion will lead us to some conclusion about how self-branding will help us to pursue our future career, especially as a reputable legal practitioner. Even though the participant of this webinar is from various educational background and knowledge, but still we believe that this webinar will give us some of important knowledge because in the end, it's not just a career in law who needs a good skills of self-branding, but also there's so many various aspects about career that also need the good skills of self-branding. And I guess that's the reason why we're here today. So I guess that's all for me. And once again, I really want to say thank you very much for all the participants who already joined this webinar. I hope you all always in a healthy condition and I wish the best of luck for all of you. And I guess now we'll hand it over again to Ms. Amalia Farah as our moderator. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Jory Rizaldo, for your warm remarks. Uh, I would like to say my grateful to you because you have been leading us so that this project can be succeed until this very day. And the next committee who's going to deliver his welcoming words is our beloved president of International Law Student Association, Yunus Barawijaya. He is the one who has supported us in any kind of way he can, and also he has been giving us strength uh, and keep believing that we can hold this event today. He is Mr. Torik Nasrun. Mr. Torik Nasrun, I give you the time to deliver your open remarks. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Torik. Uh, as a president of ILSA Chapter Universitas Brawijaya, and I would like to say welcome and also good, ev uh, good afternoon for everyone. And welcome to this webinar. First and foremost, I would like to uh, thank four significant people uh, in this event. First of all, I would like to thank our respected faculty members who are, I think they are here, uh, who have attended and also tirelessly support us in all of our activities in ILSA uh, Chapter UB. And secondly, I would like to welcome and also thank the both outstanding speakers, Mr. Abdullate and also Mr. Widaya, that respectively are from Malaysia and also Indonesia. They will share knowledge on self-branding. Thirdly, I would thank Jordi and friends, External Affairs, who have uh, tirelessly and very inspiringly organized this event that would support us uh, and give us knowledge in this great afternoon. And lastly, I would thank the four, I think it was 400-ish on the participant numbers, but I guess they are on YouTube Live, so I would like also to thank you on the participants. Looking at the quantity and also the diversity of people who are attending in this uh, event on the, participa and the participants symbolizes, even if the world is facing this, uh, epi uh, this pandemic, it didn't affect humans' enthusiasm on the pursuit of knowledge. And in this case, a knowledge is about self-branding. Well, I think myself personally that self-branding is an important aspect, is very paramount to learn in this golden age of information, of the free flow of information, especially by the medium of internet. It is a some way a branding you can do yourself. And as also an, a representation you show in the public's eye, let's say an intro of who you are, right? This shows knowledge is, this knowledge is not exclusive to law students. Uh, it's not exclusively to law students, but is, uh, but is also, important and also good for people as a whole, right? Because we want to get our careers up and to improve it in a way of uh, self-branding. External, of, because of that, external affairs has recognized the significance of self-branding and will not ignore of it because it is, it, it is detrimental to ignore it. So I think that is enough for me. I hope everyone will be having a good time in this insightful webinar. I think that is all. Thank you again. Good afternoon. Uh, Amal, take it away. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Torik, for your kind words. It really helps us in so many ways. Uh, I really appreciate your help for all this time. And then the last but not least, I would like to present to you the last but the most honorable 
person in this webinar. He is our faculty, the, he, he is the dean of our faculty, Mr. Ali Safaat, SH. Please, Mr. Ali Safaat, you can now deliver your opening remarks. Mr. Ali, are you there? All right, I think because he is not here yet, maybe he has some other important things to do. I think we just uh, move on to our next agenda. All right, now here it is. We're finally here at our main reason for all of you coming here today. The thing that we've been waiting for so long. Uh, but first, before that, I would like to remind you guys that we will be accepting questions from this webinar Zoom meeting. Uh, you can always ask your questions and send it through the chat box below the this Zoom meeting room. But all questions will be answered uh, right after the discussion session is over. Uh, so it means that we will be having a Q&A session. So uh, just please wait for a little while. All right, now let's just get this webinar started. Let's welcome our first speaker. He is Mr. Glenn Wijaya, LLBSH. He is an associate at Christian Taiwan Partners and also a co-founder of Journalist X Lawyer Podcast. It is available in Spotify. You, got, you guys can check that out later because his podcast is amazing. So without any further ado, let's just welcome him. Mr. Glenn Wijaya. Hi, everyone. So, my, is my voice clear? Yes. Yes? Okay, loud and clear. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for the welcoming remarks uh, from ILSA, uh, Brawijaya chapter. I'm very grateful that I can uh, speak uh, on personal branding today. And I hope that this presentation will benefit everyone. Uh, regardless of uh, you know wh whatever legal career that uh, or any career that you want to pursue, so uh, for this webinar, I've prepared a uh, PowerPoint slides. Uh, it's not very long, but I hope it will summarize uh, all of the things that I want to speak today. And uh, so, uh, before I start my presentation. Um, yeah, I, I would let I would love to um, uh, present to you uh, who am I and can you uh, the committee uh, go to the next slide? Yes. Okay. So for today, I'm going to tell you who am I, where did I study, and where I'm working now, and I'll move on to what is personal branding, and why do I believe that personal branding is vital for my career, and which platform uh, do I use to improve my personal branding, uh, and finally, how did I brand myself as a lawyer. Uh, next. So, I was born and raised in Jakarta, Indonesia. Uh, I come from a minority background. I am a Chinese Indonesian. Uh, my parents are both uh, Hakka and Hokkien. They come from the Bangka Island, the Bangka Blitung Islands. And I'm the first in the family to study law and work in the legal sector. Most of my family members, um, they usually go to business school or uh, they, go, they work in the IT or construction or sales, marketing. But no one is uh, working in the legal sector. So uh, I don't know, it's, uh, I'm just uh, you know, a different one in the family. And as for my uh, language skills, uh, I speak uh, Bahasa Indonesia, fluent in English, and uh, I also have a good knowledge of uh, the local Bangka dialect. Uh, because I used to study in uh, Netherlands, and I used to uh, go to a French course in Jakarta. I know some Dutch and French, uh, and finally, I think. Mandarin is increasingly becoming important, uh, no matter uh, what sector you're in, uh, because China is dominating almost in any industry. So that's why I started to uh, learn Mandarin. 
And right now I'm working as an associate at Christian Dion Partners. Uh, I'm now an advocate and member of Pradi, the Indonesian Advocates Association. I was sworn in last month at the High Court of Jakarta. And apart from my work, I'm also active in organizations. Uh, and uh, one of them is the Dewan Pimpinan Wilayah Ikatan Pemuda Tionghoa Indonesia, Provinsi DKI Jakarta. So it's a Chinese uh, Indonesian uh, Youth uh, Association. Uh, and I'm the chairman in Jakarta. And I'm also a podcaster at Journal Sex Lawyer, uh, which is available on Spotify. Next. So uh, this is uh, my education background. I went to school uh, in Jakarta, Chinese College, Jakarta. So I come from a science background, although it is, you know, usually recommended that people or students um, studying social sciences taking up law, but then uh, I decided, uh, yeah, why not? Because I think it doesn't matter uh, whether you come from the EPS or EPA, it doesn't really matter. As long as you have the determination to study law and practice law, there's uh, no problem. And as for my Bachelor of Laws, I didn't go to an Indonesian law school at first, so I went to the Netherlands or Holland. So I got my LLB in International European Law from the University of Groningen. It's uh, the northernmost province in the Netherlands. Second uh, oldest university after Leiden. And during my studies in Groningen, I got the chance to go for an Erasmus exchange. I picked University of Warsaw in Poland. And I was the only Indonesian uh, studying, or at that time, uh, in the faculty of law. And uh, finally, I also obtained another law degree, uh, which is the Sarjan Hukum from Universitas Pita Harapan in Karawaj. And as for my informal education, I uh, studied Dutch, uh, the language, at Rasmus Tal Centrum Jakarta, and the language center in the University of Groningen. I also uh, studied French. Uh, I finished, uh, I think it was up until B2 level, according to the CFR at the Institut Francais d'Indonésie in Salemba, but now they moved to Tamrin. And I also was very interested in FinTech, so I took a course online via edX. It was offered by the Hong Kong University. And finally, I also uh, obtained a special education for advocates from Paradi. Next. Uh, so this is my uh, work experience. I in 2013, after I graduated from Holland, I went to Cambodia for three months. I interned at the United Nations. Um, it's a hybrid court, basically. Uh, they have prosecutors, judges, lawyers coming from all over the world. Uh, so it's a court, a local court in Cambodia, but uh, they get assistance from the United Nations to prosecute the war criminals uh, from the 75 to 79 you know, uh, genocide or massacre uh, happening under Pol Pot, the Khmer Rouge. And afterwards, uh, after I graduated from UPH, or before I graduated from UPH, I interned at uh, a law firm in Jakarta called Armani Absunto Muharram Saint Partners. Uh, this law firm is very well known uh, for the banking and finance practice. So when I was in AYMP, I was very active in banking uh, sector. And I also, for a month, I joined Lawyer Indo. It's a, it's a company under Budijaya International Lawyers. So I assisted uh, some of the arbitration cases there. And not long after I, I uh, was employed at Lawyer Indo, I joined AXET right before my graduation at UPA. In Accent, I was very active in fintech, peer-to-peer -peer lending, uh, multi-finance, insurance, um, also administrative law or tata uh, usaha negara, and many other corporate general corporate matters. And right now, I'm working at Christian Dion Partners. Uh, to get to know Christian Dion Partners, probably you can check uh, Chambers' website because uh, we are very well known in mining 
real estate uh, and fintech. So next. So um, this is personal branding to me. Um, why is personal branding important, right? Um, it's an easy uh, question because as lawyers, um, we have to differentiate ourselves from the rest of the pack. There are so many lawyers uh, being sworn in every year. There are so many law students graduating every year. And also we have competition from um, Singapore, Malaysia, Japan, Korea. They're all coming here, although they uh, practice as foreign counsel. But then uh, we have to upskill ourselves, right? Uh, otherwise, many of our positions, especially in corporate matter, uh, will be taken up. If, if we're not very, uh, you know, if we're not very useful or not as skillful as foreign lawyers, then yeah, uh, law firms or companies, they prefer to have foreign counsels, doesn't matter. So the first thing is to differentiate myself from the rest of the pack because there are so many lawyers. Okay. And second, finding my true passion. So personal branding, really um, boils down to what is your passion? So for example, um, I like uh, anything that relates to fintech, for example, or personal data protection. Let's say these two are the uh, main areas of law that I'm very interested in. So I need to find, uh, or I need to focus uh, my personal branding to these two areas, to these two key areas. Doesn't mean that I don't know, I only know these two areas of law, but then to differentiate myself from the rest of the pack, I need to be branded as a lawyer who's uh, specializing in something. And that's why right now I'm specializing in data protection and fintech. Okay. So uh, the, the third point is charting my own path. Personal branding means personal. So you can't really copy uh, someone else's career or someone else's uh, interests, passion. No, uh, you, you need to have your own uh, personal path. So you define your own path. You don't need to follow anyone. Uh, you can uh, have an example. You have a role model, it's fine. But then you have your, your, your own touch to your personal branding. So that's my point in charting my own path. And the last but not least uh, is selling in areas I find interesting. So this relates to the second point and also the third point, right? Uh, so I need to excel in these areas that I find interesting. So when I want to be known as a lawyer who's knowledgeable about fintech and personal data protection, I need to excel. Otherwise, uh, again, coming to the first, uh, coming back to the first point, then I'll be, you know, indistinguishable from the rest of the pack, right? So I need to be uh, excellent in these areas so that I'll be differentiated from the rest of them. Next. So what are the benefits of uh, personal branding to lawyers? Firstly, visibility. Uh, probably many of you know that I'm very active on LinkedIn, uh, also Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, and also WhatsApp actually. Uh, I am very active in, in many WhatsApp groups, uh, groups for lawyers, groups uh, for my organizations, and, and, and personal chats, right? private chats. Uh, so visibility is important. You need to be known by many people, uh, as many as possible. Uh, but uh, if you have your own audience, that's even better. For example, if you're a law student, you want to be visible for uh, your future employers, then you need to target your content, for example, on LinkedIn, to you know target these employers. You need to show them. You need to showcase your skills or your achievements, and make sure that they really uh, open your posts or uh, they they give you comments or they like your posts. Right? And second point is dependence. Dependence means that people can rely on me. Um, that uh, again, if I brand myself as a personal data protection lawyer, uh, they, I want them to depend on me for these matters. So when 
when somebody thinks of personal data protection, they'll think of me. So they'll depend on my knowledge uh, on personal data protection law. And thirdly, trust. Uh, again, after you depend on someone, then you gain trust, right? So after uh, I make sure that I'm trustworthy, I can be, uh, I can provide them with the legal advice that they need regarding uh, personal data protection law, for example, then uh, they'll trust me and my legal work. And, you know, finally we come to the quality, uh, right? Because uh, they already trust you, they depend on you, then you will be regarded as a lawyer that has some quality compared to other lawyers uh, out there. Uh, next. So uh, what platforms can you use to soft brand, personal brand yourself? So firstly, LinkedIn. Uh, it's one of the best actually. Although initially LinkedIn was created to, you know, for job seekers, but now nowadays LinkedIn is increasingly becoming more like Facebook, I would say. Many people post very personal stuff or they post videos. So LinkedIn uh, is number one for me. So you need to be active on LinkedIn if you want to be visible. And Instagram, uh, why Instagram? Because uh, especially in Asia, people like to post stories and, and feeds, right? Uh, it's a different audience really. Uh, with LinkedIn, you can reach a greater number of audience, uh, maybe some foreigners who also see your post. But then on Instagram, it's very limited to people who already know you. Or if you're very well known, if you're a YouTuber or you're a content creator, basically, people know you from some something else, then you know it's it's different. So uh, the way you get your audience is, is different. And people need to add you or or people need to tag you on Instagram so that they will know you exist, right? Uh, thirdly, YouTube. Uh, if you like to make videos, fine. Uh, or you post uh, your podcast in a video format in YouTube, and then you post your podcast on uh, Anchor or Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Uh, that's also possible. Uh, newspapers, uh, you can write articles, send them to papers, uh, the Jakarta Post, Kompas, uh, yeah, whatever newspaper that. Uh, you can send your articles to uh, journals, uh, law journals. There are so many law journals uh, here in Indonesia. Some of the best, probably, uh, I would say the yeah the the journals from UI, from Unpad, UPH. Uh, of course, I think Brawijaya also has a journal, right? So you can send your articles to uh, Brawijaya uh, on student run journal. And websites, uh, you can have your own website or if you don't have uh, a very good website, you can use Wix. That's, uh, that's one example, uh, Wix. And I'm not sure if people still use WordPress, but I think it's, it's still useful. Or you can write on uh, medium.com. Right? And webinars. Uh, yeah, exactly like, like this moment, uh, right? I'm in front of you guys talking about personal branding uh, in a webinar attended by so many people, many students, many stakeholders. I think that's also one of the things that we need to take into account these days because of the pandemic. We cannot really meet in person, so make use of webinars. Uh, but uh, I would say pick your webinars very wisely because there are so many webinars and you have limited time, so you have to choose uh, these webinars wisely to showcase that you're a lawyer or a law student that is, uh, you know, has some quality. So you don't really uh, show yourself in certain webinars that you think it's not worth it. And uh, last but not least, organizations. So you need to be active uh, outside of your work. Um, or if you're still a law student, then you need to be active outside of your classroom, your virtual classroom, right? Um, this is very important because after you graduate, uh, many people will only know you as a student. But then, if you don't have, if you don't hold any position outside, apart from becoming a student, then 
you know, people will not really see you as someone they will rely on or they will look up high, you know. They don't really care if you don't uh, hold any position. For example, if you're a president of ILSA, chapter of Brevijaya, or you're a secretary uh, in some organizations, or you're very active in social work and you hold the chairman position, that's very good. That's what I did, and uh, I'll tell you more about that uh, in the next slide. Next. So uh, these are some of the points. Um, it's quite a lot, actually, uh, but I'll try to be. Uh, I'll try to keep it short. So, firstly, be as active as possible during university. So, be as active here means that. Mm, in Indonesia, we always say, uh, don't be a kupu-kupu, kuliah pulang, kuliah pulang. So you need to be active, uh, meaning that you have to join competitions, you have to do many things apart from studying, apart from uh, doing uh, normal student life, you know. So you need to be active. Uh, I'll go to my second point. Join more than one type of, um, of competition, and winning is not the ultimate goal. Uh, for example, I joined uh, MUN, although I'm not a IR student. Uh, I joined writing competition, although the topic is not about law. I also joined Moot Court, uh, Willem Biss, uh, and IHL, ICRC, because that's what law students do. So uh, I went to Hong Kong to represent UPH in the BIS competition. And I think, uh, yeah, apart from mooding and writing and MUN, I also joined the business law competition held by UE. And, you know, in, in these competitions uh, held by UE, uh, the business law competition, I failed miserably. But then again, winning is not the ultimate goal. So the goal here is to expand your knowledge and to expand your network. Uh, I think MUN is, is uh, one of the best examples to expand your network outside of uh, the legal sector because once you graduate you will realize your clients mostly are, are not lost uh, law graduates but business people or any other person not studying law because they will ask you uh, ask for your legal advice uh, thirdly write write and write uh, this is uh, one of the key skills to have as a law student and as a lawyer we need to write a uh, large amount, actually, and we need to write every day, writing emails, writing uh, chats on WhatsApp to our clients. And yeah, writing is very important. And uh, please write as many articles as you can during university, uh, send them to newspapers, uh, upload them on your website. Yeah, because it will own your skills uh, when you become a lawyer later and join more than one organization. Uh, for example, I joined the Badan Executive Mahasiswa at UPH. I became the head of uh, Insight and Reasoning Department. And apart from BEM, I also joined uh, Ikatan Pemuda Tionghoa Indonesia. Uh, when, I was just, when I was still at UPH, I was just a member. And I also joined uh, East Office. East Office is a uh, uh, Indonesian Student Association for International Studies. So it's an um, association for mainly for IR students, but I also joined uh, that organization. Uh, one of the most famous alumni is uh, Fadli Zon. So, uh, but that's not the reason why I joined this organization. I'm just saying that, you know, the, the more organizations uh, that you join, you can meet so many people uh, sometimes. They have uh, inspiring alumni, and probably after you graduated from these organizations, you'll get to know uh, some of the famous alumni later on, maybe during their reunions. So that's one of the perks, right, of joining more than one organization. And so uh, I'll move on to producing a podcast. So these days, you can't really get out and, and hold a webinar, uh, a seminar, or hold a meeting in person. So I think producing the podcast uh, is a good platform to dis disseminate your ideas or your knowledge, legal knowledge. Uh, 
uh, it's very easy to produce podcasts. You, you just need to use, uh, for example, a Zoom call or Skype call record, then uh, just put the recording on Anchor. And yeah, that's basically it, a producing podcast. Uh, but then I would suggest you to invite a speaker, guest speaker, because if you speak, uh, if you if you don't have a guest speaker, it will be less interesting. So. And sec and next, uh, effort on LinkedIn and other social media platform. Uh, so be active on LinkedIn. It's not just your online CV, but make use of LinkedIn. Post uh, good content and your achievements on LinkedIn and other social media. Uh, become a speaker in a webinar. Again. Uh, in a webinar, so many people will attend, uh, and you're expected to add value uh, because probably people value your experience or your knowledge. So once you become a speaker in a webinar, make use of it and make sure you brand yourself uh, as someone who's knowledgeable in the, in the topic. And among all of these things, please, uh, if you're still studying at uh, universities, don't forget to get good grades because uh, when you apply for jobs, people will obviously, the HR will see your, your uh, GPA. And well, many people say that you don't need good GPAs to work in the prominent law firms. That's fine if you have uh, other things to uh, highlight. For example, if you join more than three moot court competitions or you, you're the son of someone, for example, uh, and but the point is, a uh, good grade is uh, one of the uh, um, the elements that uh, the law, law firms or companies will see before they uh, ask you to join uh, the law firms or companies. And last but not least, please do internships. Uh, you can do it in any uh, institution, governmental institution or uh, NGO or uh, like what I did, I, I went to Cambodia to get an interesting internship at the court, or you can of course go to law firms, uh, companies. As if they have internships, uh, just do it and uh, don't worry about the, the salary, you know, because what matters is the experience and the network that you build, uh, what you have with the partners, with associates, that's what matters. Next. Yes, so uh, yeah, before I uh, conclude, um, please uh, feel free to add me on LinkedIn, uh, on Instagram, my WhatsApp, my email, and uh, please have a listen on my podcast if you're interested uh, on law and journalism. And uh, yeah, I hope to receive questions after this. Uh, after thousands uh, session and if you don't have the chance to post any question please feel free to contact me on these platforms uh, thank you all right thank you very much for mr glenn for the amazing explanation about self-branding as we can see that mr glenn has so many experiences and it shows that he is such a dominated person and he always gives his bet at what he likes and that is why I admire him. Uh, before I um, before I move on to the next session, I would like to briefly con give conclusions about what he has explained to us. The first that Mr. Glenn encouraged us to be different and also to be original. And also he said that we have so many platforms that we can use to do self-branding, such as YouTube and also LinkedIn. LinkedIn and also podcast. And also, uh, we can do self-branding in so many ways, such as joining so many organizations and also competitions. And do not forget to keep up the good marks uh, at our classes and also do some job internships. Before I move on to the next session, Mr. Glenn, I think I have something to ask you. May I ask some questions? Yes. Okay. Uh, a few days ago, I have listened to one of the episodes of your podcast. And to be honest, it really excited me because 
uh, there's one thing that I would like to ask that is related to this topic. If I'm not mistaken, it was in the first or the second episodes of the first season. Uh, you were talking about uh, when we are in the middle of an interview with an interviewer. Uh -huh. You say that when the interviewer asks you some questions that we do not know the answer, it is better if we do not answer carelessly. Uh, I honestly do not know how to, uh, what is it? Mm, I'm confused as to how, how should I do at that time if, we, if I do not know how to answer the questions given by the interviewer? Should I just stay silent or should I admit that I don't know how to answer the questions given by the interviewer? Mm, it really depends. If uh, There are so many types of interviews. Uh, for example, uh, at, at one of my interviews with a law firm that I applied to, um, I was supposed to give a pres presentation about something and then they'll, uh, the partners uh, will sit in front of me, all of them, and they'll ask me questions. If uh, the questions relate to my presentation and I don't know the answer, that will be embarrassing. But if uh, the questions don't relate to my background uh, and my presentation, Really, it, it, it again depends uh, on a case by case basis. Uh, is it something that is too personal for you? Uh, or it's something that you're supposed to know? For example, if they ask about company law, or uh, for example, the, the most usual stuff is perbuatan uh, hukum, or one prestasi, which of these kinds of things, when you don't know how to answer, uh, or if you don't really uh, remember correctly, or Exact, the exact word, just use, uh, you know, you just improvise. Uh, but in case you don't really know the answer and you're expected to know, uh, then I would suggest you uh, try to divert their attention by, uh, you don't say you don't know about the stuff, but then you try to talk, don't stay silent. Uh, but keep going on and, and just uh, divert their attention to something else that you're very good at. I think that will really show that, okay, I'm, I have deficiency in some areas of law, but then wait a minute, I am very knowledgeable in, in print, data protection, victim planning, whatever. So just showcase your, your good attributes and, and uh, not hide, but just like divert <laughs> their attention from uh, these, uh, you know, uh, these areas that you're lacking. All right, thank you I very much, Mr. That Glenn. Would be my answer. Yeah. Oh, right, thank you very much. It was really helpful because I was really curious about that. Thank you. And before we walk, we move on to the next speaker. I think we are. And we have someone. Some of the committees from our faculty to because he hasn't uh, have any chance to deliver his opening remarks i think that this is a great time for him to welcome uh, this webinar uh, so mr satyawan nurjaya nurjaya sakti please the time is yours to deliver your opening remarks dipersilakan kepada pak sakti untuk memberikan sambutan Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. First of all, would you please forgive me because I come late to join this program. Why? Because I have so many to do since the morning until now. So, I come late joining in joining this program. It's okay, Mr. Sakti. In spite of this, many people have holiday, but especially for today, I have so many to do. That is why today 
in this meeting my complete so would you please forgive me to that to this problem i feel very happy because elsa international law students association held a program held a webinar that the tema of this program is elsa legal career international law students association legal career i believe that this topic is very very interesting very 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 important and will be very useful for the students in future because in this program all of the speaker will tell about this experience during the to in their its of their job so would i would like to thank for the speaker such as mr glen wijaya llp sarjana hukum that would like to give a speech in this program thank you very much and also i thanks also for other speakers that would like to give the speech in this program now and also i would like to thanks to the committee especially the students who join elsa international law students association that has made so many preparations that this program can be conducted and also i feel very happy that the participants of this program is very very many people many students would like to be the participants in this programs that not only come from Brawijaya University but also from other universities and finally i and finally i think my speech is enough and then if uh it is possible i would like to declare in spite of the first speaker has spoken but i would like to declare that this webinar elsa legal career is open i think it's enough thank you very much wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much, Mr. Sakti, for your warm welcoming. We really appreciate your guide and also your permission for us to hold this event. And so, without any further ado, because we have already heard uh, our first speaker, Mr. Glenn Wijaya, who has explained to us about what is self-branding and also why is it important for us and also uh, why, uh, what does it mean for him? And now it is, it is the time for our second speaker to deliver his presentations about uh, a, little more, a little bit deeper about self-branding. Now let's just welcome Mr. Auzan Shahid Abdullah, LLB LLM. He is a Malaysian. He is a head group legal compliance and risk management division at the Masara Realty Berhard and also a co-founder or managing partner of Novice Arbitration Moot Court Competition, or you can call it NAMCO. Maybe for you guys who have been joining this uh, competition before, you have already known him beforehand. So without further ado, let's just welcome him, Mr. Auzan, the time is yours. 
All right. Thank you, Samuel. Can everyone hear me clearly and crystal clear? Can I have a thumbs up for that? You guys can hear me. Thanks, thanks. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Auzan Shaidi, um, as presented and explained by Amal just now. Thank you, Amal, for the uh, introduction. Uh, you guys can call me Auzan or Ojan. Uh, let's just be uh, casual here. Uh, just some inventories. Uh, I think let's have a two-way and interactive way of uh, uh, conversation. Uh, throughout my discussion, my presentation, if anyone has any uh, question, uh, you can just uh, interrupt and ask me right away. So let's have that uh, interactive uh, moment um, with everyone here. Um, I think, and also first and foremost, I'd like to take this uh, opportunity to thank um, Elsa uh, University of Bawijaya for inviting me uh, to this uh, session. Um, I said yes uh, right after uh, I was approached whether I wanted um, to deliver um, this um, keynote address on the self-branding. And also, I think everyone has heard uh, about uh, Glenn's presentation just now, which was very accurate, very concise on how do we equip ourselves um, as a student and how this will be a good preparation for us um, en route um, to uh, be in a legal career, which is the reality after this, the reality check. Um, so a brief introduction about myself, um, I was actually Abdullati. I'm currently uh, spearheading the Group Legal Compliance and Risk Management Division at a public listed company in Malaysia, uh, Daman Realty Berhad. Um, I'm in my fourth year at the company. Uh, initially, I only have planned to stay for one year, but the environment is very well and I'm enjoying my job scope as well as uh, what Ever I'm doing now, so hence uh, the fourth year. And, and as also introduced by Amal just now, um, I also co-founded um, an international mooting competition based in Malaysia. Uh, I think we have received participation from numerous universities from Indonesia last year, uh, which is called Novice Arbitration Mooting Competition or more fondly known as NAMCO. Um, next. Just a brief, uh, a short uh, description about myself. Let's not deal too much about me. It's, it's, it's pretty boring, actually. Um, I'm 30 years old, uh, based um, in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Um, that's my current position um, at my current uh, employee year. Um, I graduated from UITM Shah Alam, Malaysia, uh, in both uh, Bachelor of Legal Studies and Bachelor of Laws, the LLB. And I also pursued my master's degree um, in the University of Manchester uh, in public international law. Um, I have some uh, small achievements um, that my team has uh, made uh, thus far. When we were uh, decorated um, as the best construction and real estate and house team of the year uh, for three years in a row, 2018 to 2020. And um, yeah, um, as mentioned, I also co-founded and um, head the NAMCO Management LLP, as well as the organization of um, Novice Arbitration Moting Competition, uh, in which I'd like to take this chance to promote a little bit about this is NAMCO. Uh, next slide, please. So yeah, um, everyone been asking us whether is there gonna be NAMCO this year? Uh, the answer is definitely yes. Uh, we're going to hold NAMCO virtually this year. So we are extending our invitation to all participants across the globe um, from the Southeast Asia region, the Europe uh, region, as well as in the Americas. So the registration is still open. We haven't closed the registration yet. Uh, we are still uh, finalizing our system, our platform, and our dates. So to all participants of this uh, webinar today, uh, do extend. Um, I, I hereby extend my invitation to everyone to participate in eNAMCO 2020, which will take place in quarter four, uh, sometimes in October or November this year, will be announced um, soon. So I think uh, that's enough about um, myself or what I am currently doing. So I think we should now proceed to the reason why everyone is here, if I may, I'll pursue the next slide. So um, I'll demarcate my uh, session today into two, which is on the science and the art of self-branding. I think I'm going to supplement what Glenn has mentioned just now, which is, uh, as I said, very accurate, very concise. So I'll be focusing uh, on preparing yourself uh, in entering the legal world. So on the part one, we'll be on the science of uh, self-branding, in which um, I believe that everyone been asking, um, what do I prepare? What do I do? 
or how do I prepare myself? And I think um, Amal just now has actually elucidated a very good question, which is, uh, am I enough or am I good enough? So that's the very question that I aim to answer by the end of my session, which is a very good connotation, Amal. I'll deal across the line on am I good enough and am, am, am I enough? So on the first part, which is on the science of self-branding, so we, we've, we've heard about legal career being very difficult, very tough, very complicated, but is it really complicated? So the answer lies on you, on whether you are prepared to actually enter the real world. Because um, some of my colleagues or my friends even say that actually the real world is harder than uh, studies. And some also say studies is, was actually harder than the real world. So it depends on how you articulate or, 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 or how you actually deal with the chapters of your life. So I think um, where I'm going is that self-branding actually complements your achievement. Self-branding should supplement your achievement. So it should not be the, the, the paramount uh, benchmark that, oh, as long as I have self-branding, I can excel out there. So let's not forget your academic records and, and achievement as well. Yeah, let's not forget on how you actually deal with people, how you actually uh, talk to people. Self-branding or personal branding in this context is actually the idea of presenting yourself to the real world and to also obtain recognition and acceptance of who you really are. So the science is that be yourself. As what Glenn said, you have just to be yourself. But the art of the science of being yourself is that there, there are certain things that you still have to gather, have to obtain, and have to equip yourself from time to time. So in short, it is a kind of a system, a methodology that you have to learn from time to time. That's why um, I will move forward to my next slide on the stages of self-branding. Next, please. So it goes on, how do we prepare ourselves? So I'll divide the stages of self-branding into three, which is the first one is on the preparatory course, which is how do you prepare yourself to actually enter the legal career? This will tie back to Amal's very early question, like, uh, am I good enough? So the answer to whether you are good enough is, to, is that, are you prepared? Are you prepared to enter the real world, the legal career? So these are among the seven things that um, I managed to capture. What do you have to really prepare? On the first stage, on the preparatory course, the very first thing that you have to really um, provide is that your resume. The resume is the Quran or the Bible of who you really are. So the articulation of information have to be very accurate, have to be very relevant. So firstly, do entail what is your strength. Second, do include only relevant information in the resume, especially ones that are effective and efficient to where you are applying um, for. For example, if you're applying a work at a restaurant, would the skills that you can uh, do IT uh, work relevant? So it might be not. So the relevant information, if you're applying for a, a, a position as a chef, is that you can cook. You can do uh, good plating on uh, the table and um, et cetera, et cetera. So here comes, in the context of legal career, it goes back to what Glenn said. To brand yourself from the very beginning, which is in your studies, um, chapter to join, uh, to participate in, uh, in numerous activities, which I believe every law school worldwide do provide a spectrum of activities, a spectrum of chance for you to, part to, 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 to participate. Uh, I think, for example, um, there's a model United Nations that is very active and very um, popular nowadays. We have mooting competitions and we also have organization skills which is those who actually join organizations, clubs, it can be music clubs, it can be law clubs. Those management skills is very essential, very crucial, because this will show that you're a systematic person, that you are exposed to managing and administering your life and also activities that you will be focusing and dealing in the future. 
And to also prepare yourself besides than your resume, make sure that it looks good because every interviewer would want to see a good resume, an interesting one. So be different. Do not uh, send a plain one, just black and white with only words. You can do some uh, infographics, some images as well. Um, that would actually um, a good notion of self-branding because an interesting uh, and a unique resume would also show um, the kind of person you are, that you are attractive, you're fine, you're easygoing, you're friendly. So that is actually the mirror, the very first step in branding yourself, your resume. Do remember, that is your Quran, your Bible, your dictionary for the entire your, your, your career life, regardless in legal career or any kind of career. Secondly, um, this is one thing that um, I noticed a lot of people have been lacking uh, um, on, which is on the appearance side. So I think it is normal. Uh, most of the legal career um, our chances are to be legal practitioners, lawyers, in-house counsels, um, and also legal affairs related positions at ministries or at embassies. Um, appearance is that how do you prepare yourself in two things, on how you communicate, on how you converse, and secondly, on how you appear based on your attire. So you don't, you, you don't want to be seen wearing shorts or a, a very um, worn out jeans or slacks to an interview to, or just a meet up. So you want to be corporately correct. On, why do I say corporately correct? Is that um, I have encountered an interviewee who came unprepared. Very messy, um, hair was long, uh, bad breath, and also the attire was so out. So that is how you actually brand yourself, on how you appear. It is not wrong to suit up for one day, to attend to an interview, and just be nice, be corporately correct in your attire. And the sub point to that is on how you converse. Because this shows the very essence of self-branding, remember everyone, is to be confident. Without confidence, you can't do anything. Um, it, it, it is as simple as to order a food, a bakso, for example, at a restaurant. If you don't have enough confidence to order food from um, the chef or the uh, cashier, you can't order the food that you wanted to eat. So it goes that you have aim, you have objective in your life, but you are very shy, you are not confident. How do you attain or achieve that particular objective in your life when you yourself are not confident with your very true self? So in short, your appearance matter on how you converse, be nice, be polite, have good manners, um, and of course, attire does matter. If I may share from the perspective of an interviewer, I personally do care on how one's appear during uh, interview as well as during um, office hours. So that matters. There's a very essence of preparatory uh, self-branding. And last, uh, we shall deal with the interview skills, which will also relate back to my earlier point on the conversation. So I think this is... Um, the very least uh, problem or concern for almost all law students to speak, to appear confident, and to converse um, with your interviewer. So I think this is one thing that you guys can practice even at law schools, to have your friends, to talk to your friends, or even to talk to your lecturers or your, your, your tutors um, even. So the one tip that I have is that interview is a normal conversation. It is get to know each other uh, face or um, time. So be nice. So um, have the manners, have, have the um, methods as well. Because in interview, the only one thing that the interviewer wants to see is that how you carry yourself. Because if you want to ask about your academic results, about how you did you excel at law schools, we already have those in I do want to be knowing uh, those things that are already written in your resume. So I want to know your, 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 your skills, how you converse to people. So to go back to my earlier point, in order to have a good conversation, be confident. So how I practice is that um, I'll just um, waking up early in the morning and just look in the mirror. Um, I think this is very basic. I think everyone has said about this. Talk to the mirror. I even talk to my cats. 
it's how you actually gain your 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 confidence and at some point i did talk to my refrigerators at home just just that i don't care who my audience is as long as i can talk to you as long as i can be confident i am prepared i am prepared so moving on to that um the second stage of self branding will be on the hands on um mechanism that you have to equip for example on the attitude part is how you present yourself it goes back to your social skills your soft skills in in terms of that how you converse to other people how you communicate and communication goes back to the key of conversation you don't talk alone so you have to connect with the people in front of you and have a decent two way conversation because only then you can know the other person who's sitting next to you in front of you and that's the only way the person who sits in front of you can know you so be genuine be true just um yeah i think i i i super agree with what glam say just be yourself be authentic but with boundaries so you have to know your boundaries the do's and the don'ts that what you can talk and what you cannot talk so let's say in the idea of attending an interview so what interviewer would want to consider is that can you talk everyone can talk but can you converse and communicate whether you allow the quorum in that interview to ask question and of course it goes to the next point do listen listen first you don't have to rush to answer a certain particular question given by the interviewer listen understand and you can take 5 seconds and then mr something 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 i believe blah 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 and that goes back to the choice of word so this is very interesting that i always talk to my colleagues and also to the uh, candidates of my uh, interviews that we conducted the choice of word that when people ask your opinion um we do i do believe that the choice of think t h i n k is a weak word because that clearly shows that you're not sure you are uncertain So that's why you say this reason you say oh I think the weather is very hot because there's a climate change but just imagine what kind of an impact it would give to the interviewer when you just choose another kind of word which is believe b e l i v mr blah 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 i believe the weather is hot because uh, we are and currently encountering climate change globally so that would give an additional point to you so that's another tips i can give on how you actually personally brand yourself so through hands on there are two key points number 1 communication goes two way and number 2 the choice of word when you attend an interview or you communicate so the last point for the last stage of self branding would be on the maintenance so i think uh, i believe Okay. I believe everyone would agree with me um uh, maintaining or sustaining something that you have achieved is very difficult than attaining it. For example, um let's say I won an award. So to win an award is one challenge, one obstacle, but to maintain winning the same award the following year is actually more challenging. So that's why in the idea of self branding, personal branding maintaining what you have prepared during preparatory stage and hands on stage is very crucial because this goes to the three ideas to track record your learning curve and recognition dealing with track record is very interesting because people want to recognize you based on what you have done what you have achieved so this goes to you knowing your really good self your strength in what you can achieve because of obviously people want to know you because of good reasons because you don't know you don't want people to actually notice you and tease you because of wrong reasons that oh he has bad breath or he's very messy at work or he can't even do his work so you don't want that kind of track record so in terms of self branding at workplaces in legal career for example you want someone to recognize you based on your track record what you have done and what you can do so this goes to the idea of the learning curve remember learning phase in our life is limitless 
there's no such thing that, oh, I've learned something, I'm done, I'm good enough. No, never believe in someone who says so to you. It is limitless. Always learn good things. Always learn new things because it's not wrong for you to learn new things. For example, um, we are all law grads. I think the one thing that we really hate um, must be calculator, mathematics, and figures. I think I can vouch that most law students hate these three things. Math, for example. We hate numbers and figures. So those are also the things that uh, my stigma when I entered a legal career. I'm not going to deal with any accounting, any numbers, or any figures anymore. But from time to time, I realized that in order to, to, to self-brand myself, to be more equipped, to be better than other normal in-house counsels, you have to learn on the business and commercial perspective. You have to learn accounting. You have to learn numbers and figures. This is what I meant by learning curve. Just learn whatever that can make you a better person because learning curve is limitless. Because this is why you can actually sustain and maintain your self-branding from time to time to be recognized for the right reasons, not because you did something wrong. And oh, speak, speaking about doing something wrong, this is also things that um, I, also, uh, I, always I always speak and converse with my team members. Um, when I think uh, most millennials, I think everyone here mostly are millennials, uh, the Gen Y, the millennials are very afraid to make mistakes. No one is perfect. Are you perfect? Am I perfect? No, I've, ne I've never thought of myself as a perfect human being. Um, make mistakes. I mean, okay, I'm not encouraging people to make mistakes, but do not be afraid uh, with making mistakes, with making faults. Because only from this, you can actually learn what you can do right but do not make the same mistake again so this is the idea of maintaining the self-branding to your colleagues even as law students to your peers and to your lecturers you learn from your mistake and you don't repeat it and you just learn and be a better person so that will conclude my first segment of self-branding which is on the self-prospect that um, it is basically the strength that you have, the embodiment that you have to uh, acquire, to embrace, or in short, it is about your internal skills, what you have to do in order to be a better person. There's no bad person in this world. There's a good person and a better person. Self-branding is, a, is a just a supplementary thing. It's a, it's a, a complementary idea to make you as a better person. So, that's the first part of my self-branding part just on the stages. So I think if everyone is clear and there's no question, may I proceed? Um, Amal, do we, do we have any questions before I proceed to my next segment? Uh, for me, I think you can move on because it is really clear to me. But I don't know if there is any participants who would like to ask something. I think, oh yeah, uh, I do notice this one. That's, that, that's one um, from SKM Semarang. Um, I have a question to... I was that myself. Uh, Amal, may I read it? Oh, if you would like to, yes. Yeah. Oh, can I just deal with the question now, since we are on the on the topic? Do you mind? Yes, of course. All right. Uh, so no, no, I don't mind. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. So the question goes: um, How to maintain knowledge in law? Do you read book or anything like every day? Interesting question. So I think um, from the perspective of a legal uh, of, of of a law student first. So as a law student, you are required to actually read every day your legal cases, your legal books, even your reference books. Um, I have to admit my mistake during my law school uh, in Malaysia. Um, okay, I apologize in advance to my lecturers in, in Malaysia. I was uh, pretty not hardworking, pretty lazy to read legal cases and uh, full cases. I think I'll just uh, jump straight away to the, the decision part. So that I can just gauge the principle and answer it in exam papers. But I noticed the difference when I pursued my master's degree in Manchester. Um, without reading, without knowledge in law, you will just be an ordinary person. You won't be a better person. So in short, in, summarize, in, in response to SKM Semarang's question on do, how do we gain knowledge in, knowledge, of, knowledge in law. So... 
two things. From the perspective as a law student, do read. Do read a lot. It does not, um, it, you shall not impede your spectrum of reading to just uh, legal books or legal cases. Do uh, follow um, Twitter accounts or Facebook accounts or Instagram accounts of, of many journal articles uh, worldwide. Uh, European international law journal articles um, and many other commercial uh, law articles. So this th this these sources will make you very updated, very uh, updated with what is happening worldwide. Especially if I can give an example um, for the aspect of international law, it is an evolving law. Um, there's no um, hard and fast rule about international law. There's no right. There's no wrong. But it's about how you interpret the law and how countries worldwide interpret international law. So you cannot rely just on legal cases or, or just on legal books. So you have to read the general articles from a perspective from, this, from the scholars. So yes, do read a lot. It is a prerequisite for every law student, for every law practitioner. We have to read. Reading enhances your mind, SKM Samarang. I, I have to uh, agree with that. So if there's no more question for the audience from my first segment, um, may I proceed to my second segment of the self-branding part, Amal? Yes, please do proceed. Amal, am I going too fast? No, you're not. It okay. is a perfect pace. Thank please, you. Please, please let me know if, uh, if I'm going too fast because, um, um, yeah. If, if. Sure, yes, I will let you know. <laughs> All right, can we go to the, to the second part, please? Yes, of course. So in conclusion, uh, the first part, we have dealt with the science, which is the application part on the system, the methodology on how do you equip yourself with self-branding. So if I can summarize the first part, it is about you equipping the skills to yourself first, the confidence, the trust, and how you have to sustain and maintain this personal branding uh, in order to have that self-prospect idea. So on the second segment of, uh, out, of, out of three, out of three. So the second segment of my personal branding um, get to know each other session today is on the art of self-branding. So why do I brand it as art? It's because it deals with uh, the elements that I've mentioned, which is the communication, reflection, and utilization of the system that you have dealt earlier. You already have all the internal skills. You already have all the confidence. You have the relevant uh, credentials. Oh, um, I, I participated in mooting competitions. I am the president of this club A. I am the uh, treasurer for this club B. But how do you apply that? So that comes the second part, which is the art of self-branding, um, which also will be very beneficial to legal career. Because, uh, as I said, my premise is simple. Uh, we are all good people, but we can be a better person. We can be a better individuals when we do have this self-branding with um, the soft skills from time to time. Next slide, please. So, um, also, I will divide the notion of the art of self-branding into three, uh, which is the first part is character discovery, the second part is on the marketing and cross-selling, and the third part is on the persuasion skills. So dealing with the first thing is, uh, is on the character discovery. So my personal experience is that um, I was once, um, I once decided that I don't want to practice law at all. After, uh, throughout the, 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 the finishing point of my law degree, I was like, that's it, I hate law, I don't want to deal with books anymore, I don't want to read legal cases anymore, I just want to live law. So I noticed why I had that feeling. Because I wasn't sure about my character discovery. I wasn't sure about my character standpoint and stance. So that's why learning from my mistake. So what matters is the character building of yourself. So in order to have a stable character building, character development, you have to know what you are good at and what you are not good at. So as simple as um, that I don't eat um, curry, but I eat pasta. So those are because of my preferences of, or, or, my liking, or my likings. Uh, so you have to know your, do, your strengths and your weaknesses. So in this aspect, you yourself 
have to determine the do's and the don'ts in your life. So for example, that you really enjoy doing commercial law, you enjoy doing merger and acquisition, all these corporate stuff, and you don't like doing criminal justice system. So it goes back to your internal controls just now. You don't highlight on your bad results in criminal justice system in your resume, but you instead highlight the, the plus points of your, corporate, of your corporate and commercial achievement. And the don'ts is that you just want to list everything in your resume. Don't. You don't want to tell what you've done at your SMR or just focus on the recent or latest achievements that you have uh, actually attained. So for example, if I can give, um, uh, again, my personal experience at workplace. Um, as an example, um, I found that my strength is that um, I manage, um, I enjoy merger and acquisition. But I really don't enjoy doing contentious matter. For example, dispute resolution, to deal with case at court of law. So those are the things that um, I enjoy, but I don't enjoy it as much as I enjoy doing merger uh, and acquisition or equity debt uh, financial transactions. So how I brand to my colleagues, to my uh, superiors, is that when there's a project on commercial law, so I'll, I'll take lead. I'll take lead. So I'm just going to say that this is my strength. So I can do commercial law. But in the event that that particular project requires you to do something concerning your weakness, for example, for my... Hi, a question for Awazan. As a final student, why do you finally say to pursue your career in law? Because as a law student, my second year in myself, I'm... I'm in that dilemma. I'm in oh. that dilemma. Okay, oh. uh, this is from, from Tori. Hi, a question for Awuzan. As a final year student, why do you finally decide to pursue your career in law? Because as a law student myself, I'm in that dilemma. Karena sebagai mahasiswa hukum, secara pribadi saya merasa bahwa saya melihat diriku ini merasakan dilemma. Okay. Um, oh, I think uh, it's, 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 it's a very good question. So um, I'll just deal with the question first. So um, how do I solve my, my um, dilemma back then? So um, there's one thing that we all have to recognize and appreciate. Um, law degree is very valuable out there. So when you graduate from a law degree program, you don't just, you, you don't have to be a, to be a, to be a lawyer. There are many other choices. There are paradigm of job opportunities that, that you can be. With law degree, you can be in-house counsel. You can be a attorney of, uh, of law for, for, for the government. You can work for the embassy. Even with a law certificate, a law degree, you can work at human resource division. You can work anywhere you want. So that's the beauty of having a law degree, is that you can work anywhere you want. You can do anywhere anything that you want. So how do I escape from the, the dilemma that I don't want to work in law or, or legal related career? Um, do know your role model. Who is your idol? Because who you look, 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 look up to? Who do you um, link around, spend time with matters? Which is uh, in this context to find your correct uh, colleagues, your, 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 your correct friends. So um, my, um, I look, uh, I looked up to my uh, partner in crime, um, a very um, dedicated person um, close to me. Um, I straight away told him, hey, I don't like law anymore and I don't want to do law. So um, he woke me up by saying that, why can't you just finish what you started? You already enrolled yourself in law degree program. Just finish it. Finish the whole ambit the whole journey of um, obtaining that law certificate, that, that law degree. And after you graduate, then decide what you want to do. At least you graduate with a law degree. So in response to the uh, early question, it does not necessarily mean that when you have a law degree, you have to be a legal practitioner. It is time for us uh, in 2020 to embrace your dream, to pursue any careers that you want 
in this um, journey, in your life journey. As long as it makes you happy and you are in pink, good pink health, uh, listen to the voices of your heart, um, follow your dream, be whatever you want to do. But um, reiterating what my um, close uh, a partner in crime told me, finish what you started. You are already enrolled in this law degree program, just finish it. So am I clear? Can, can I continue my um, points just now? Uh, um, Mr. Auzan? Yes? I would like to inform something to the participants regarding this webinar. May mm -hmm. I? Sure, 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 sure. The floor is yours, Ahmad. Okay, uh, to the participants, if you would like to ask some questions to our speakers, please remember that you have to raise your hands first or maybe you can just excuse yourselves uh, rather than just cut of our speakers uh, conversations. So please later, if you're going to ask questions, you can just uh, type it in the chat box or you can just raise your hands and excuse yourself first before asking. Thank you so much. Mr. Auzan, you can proceed. All right, thanks Amal. Thanks for the uh, inventory checklist. Okay. So uh, moving on to what I said just now, on, um, I'm just um, sum summarizing the character discovery part. Um, always know your strengths and always know your, your weaknesses. Uh, it does not mean that when you have weaknesses, you cannot use it. Use your weaknesses as your strength. For example, um, that someone may say that, oh, I cannot work under pressure. Okay, fine. We acknowledge that you cannot work under pressure. But do you ever realize when you do work under pressure, you are more focused. You can do work better. You can deliver products better. So always find solutions, alternative to every problems you have. Do not run away. Because this will make you a very faithful, genuine personal branding to yourself. To identify and to know your strengths and also your weaknesses. So it goes to the art of, of, of personal branding. The, your character discovery. You yourself um, know what's best for you. Identify it. Talk to people if you need to. Because um, any decision that you make today, do not regret it. It is the best decision that you've made at that particular point of time. But always learn. As I said, do not be afraid of making mistakes. But learn from the mistake and do not make it ever again and be a better person. That's how you become uh, more comprehensive, more ac ac acknowledge yourself, uh, your own uh, strengths. So on the next idea of marketing cross-selling, this, this art is um, very crucial. This will differentiate us from being a normal person and a better person. The marketing and cross-selling um, of personal branding uh, relates back to your character discovery. When you have to use your strength at every opportunity in front of you, for example, in a discussion that might not even be related to you, but you want to give opinion. So that's how you, are, you can be recognized. So for example, at my office, there's a very commercial, very business uh, discussion that uh, people are talking um, to each other. But there's some part that, oh, I can give my, my opinion. So that's where we're, that we learned earlier on the stages, on the internal controls to have manners. So you can just say, um, excuse me, if I may add something to your point, Mr. or Ms. Uh, XSX. So you can just give your opinion. So that is where you showcase your strengths at every opportunities that, that you have. Because directly and indirectly, people will say, oh, this is a very confident person. He knows how to deliver his standpoint with the correct manners confidently. So... This is why marketing cross-selling, to just like cross-sell your strengths, the do's and the don'ts are very important. So it goes back to what Glenn has also mentioned and I have also mentioned um, various times. Uh, be genuine, be authentic, but always know the boundaries, the do's and the don'ts about yourself. And the last part of the notion of self-branding would be on the persuasion skills. Um, um, I have to, uh, to, to deal with this because um, this is also lacking in millennials nowadays, uh, the persuasion skills. 
because you do know you have values you have qualities that you are um, this president on in that that you are uh, graduated with uh, cum laude uh, the first class in everything but are you persuasive enough to convey to people your point so that they can agree with you and buy your product so self branding or our life journey is actually um, about how you sell yourself I mean, in terms of um, your product, in your your works, your qualities, your values. So it goes back to whether the strengths that you have, the track record, your works, your results that you can actually sell to people. For example, uh, as I said, um, I enjoy doing commercial law. So whether I persuade other people that, hey, this is uh, my advice to you. Why don't we do this project like this? A, like B, like C, and we attach to a, a potential JV partner like this, a joint venture partner like this. So the idea of persuading other people to agree with you is an art of self-bending itself. Persuasion skills is not gifted, you don't born with it, but it is one thing that when you have the confidence, when you have your character discovery, and you can cross-sell um, your products so that's where you can be very persuasive. And also to be persuasive goes that way to whether you can actually dominate or be presently visible in every discussion. Two things. First, always have a healthy discussion. Do not be emotional. Do not be aggressive. Always be healthy with manners. If you disagree with other people, still maintain your composure. I beg to differ, uh, Miss uh, XSX. Um, if I may disagree with you, and, and like so this is where you showcase your consent, showcase your, your qualities um, from time to time. And if I may summarize the notion of self branding itself on the, um, on the self prospectus, it's about making your presence um, visible, accepted, and perceived. Because remember, recognition does not come from other people first. You yourself have to recognize what you can do, what you can offer, what are the products that you can sell to people, your strengths, your uh, dues, your qualities, your values. And also a very interesting part that Glenn mentioned, to create the reliability, the reliance, the dependency, so that people know that, hey, this particular guy can actually advise us on something. Trust me, everyone, you want to be one person like that. So this is why the idea of self-branding starts from your resume, during, you, uh, during your working journey, at a, a le during your legal career, as well as sustaining it, persuading people to believe in you, to, 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 to have faith in you, and to create impact of course, on your presence in every discussion, in every working environment. So that concludes my second segment um, today. Um, and if I may just uh, proceed to my last segment of, of self-branding. Next slide, please, Amara. Oh, yes, you may proceed. Yeah, yeah. can we go to the next slide? Which is, uh, I think it happens to be my last slide, right? No, second last slide. Uh, so the second, the last part of my session today is on embracing the keys to legal career. I think on the first part, uh, we've talked about the signs, the, the, the self-prospect that you have to embody first. And the second part, we spoke about the notion of art of self-branding, which is the, ex the external controls, the communication skills, the, the, the recognition that you have um, to embody as well in order to have part three which is the keys to legal career itself via the um, element of self-branding. Next slide, please. So in short, uh, everyone here today, um, how I can summarize my session today uh, is into two, self-prospect and self-prospective. Uh, prospectus. So basically the first one, self-prospect is about understanding yourself. What you can offer, what you can do, and what is your strength. So it is more on the conceptual approach of yourself, on how do you plan to present yourself to your future workplace, 
to future colleagues and environment. So this is where there are a few pointers. First one, you have to understand and acknowledge your values and qualities. Number two, have a good or a strong support system. Do know who you, who you should look up to. Um, always choose the correct uh, peer, everyone. And lastly, is on the, uh, as I said, the conceptual approach to know yourself. There are only two actually, not three. And the second part of the uh, notions of self-branding is self-prospectus. Um, why do I say self-prospectus is that you yourself is an investment. So when you already acknowledge and identify the values in yourself, so you want to sell the values to other people. And this is where you can excel wherever you are. And this is where you can differentiate yourself between being just an ordinary good person or you want to be someone better than the ordinary person. So it goes on, do facilitate others, be helpful, do not be selfish. And always, uh, this is what I always practice, always self-reflect. It does not mean you are always right. Whenever someone pinpoints to you, hey, Auzan, you have done something wrong. Acknowledge that. Listen first. Do not defend yourself um, um, immediately do listen to other people and always uh, do have a, a self reflect from time to time because self process as I said is a living evidence of impact or, or impact on how you perceive persuade and deal with other people to be accepted by other people to be recognized by other people but remember to be recognized and accepted by other people will mean nothing if you yourself do not accept and recognize your strength your values, and yourself. So in short, if I may summarize, what is self-branding? Um, why is there science, art, there's self-prospect, there's self-prospectus? I would like to summarize in three pointers. The first one, identifying the, your true self, know your boundaries, and also to shine based on the qualities and values you have. Second, do remember, Self-branding is not the only reason you can be different and excel out there. Self-branding is only supplemental to who you really are, to how you position yourself among the crowds, millions of people. And lastly, in response to Amal's very first and inter interesting question, is self-branding related to am I enough? Am I good enough? Remember, and please know this, we are all good enough. We are all enough. We are all good people. But self-branding, the, the correct way to brand yourself, to have a very good personal branding, will make you a better person. So you'll be better enough than other people. So um, I think that's all, all that, I want, that I plan to share with uh, everyone here today. So if everyone have any other inquiries, questions after this, um, aside than Q&A that we are going to have um, after this, um, I have my emails there, my official email. I have my, um, oh, that's my phone number. <laughs> so uh, if you have any questions, um, I'm reachable via WhatsApp. Do not call me. I don't entertain calls uh, often. But I do have my uh, Facebook account, Instagram account, and LinkedIn account, Auzan Shadi. So um, I'll be more than glad to attend any legal career uh, related question from time to time. Because um, you guys, millennials, the Gen Ys, Gen Zs are very promising. You guys are the future of this world, the future leaders in this world. So I think, um, Amal, um, I shall pass the floor back to you. Thank you so much. Very well. Thank you so much, Mr. Auzan, for the amazing explanation. And I have to admit that the things that you have shared with us today is really meaningful and helpful. And of course, it gives us so many benefits. Uh, but before I continue to the next session, I would like to briefly give conclusions about what have just been explained by Mr. Auzan. Firstly, Mr. Auzan uh, stated that we have to be always uh, we have always to be ourselves. Uh, but by being ourselves doesn't mean that we can just apply for jobs being unprepared. So of course we have to be prepared, and there are so much things that we have to prepare, such as resume, and then appearance, of course, and so many things. And then he stated also that we have to uh, have the ability to, co to converse with uh, so many people such as like, so it means that we have to uh, own the keys to communicate with uh, people. 
And then uh, don't forget to leave good impressions because of course we do not want to be remembered by someone uh, for some uh, bad reasons. And then he also told us that we should not be afraid to make mistakes because we can always learn from the mistakes and be better in the future. Uh, and he also shared with us that there are two keys in self-branding. The first one is self-respect. Self-respect, uh, it comes from within oneself in a form of readiness and foundation so that uh, these two things can promise to oneself that they can always uh, improve to be better. And then the second key is self-prospectus. Self-prospectus is to create impact on your presence so that, and that will result on the acceptance and recognition from the environment that you are in. All right. Uh, once again, I would like to thank for both of the speakers for the amazing explanations and the helpful information for us. All right. So let me continue to our next session. That is... Well... But before I move on, I think that all of you here, maybe everyone is kind of sleepy because in my place it is actually raining really hard. So it, yeah, it is actually a good time to sleep, but because I'm really excited in this webinar. So I think that you guys should too. So if you guys are bored and sleepy, and now I think it is the right time for us to cheer up a little bit. So I want everyone here to turn on your camera because we're going to take a picture together before everyone leaves this room because uh, think because they think that this webinar is over, but we still have Q&A session after this. So I will give you two minutes to get ready. Uh, look nice so that the picture will be taken nicely too. Uh, after the two minutes over, please turn on your camera. Well, I think everyone is really excited for this event because even before I told everyone to turn on their camera, you guys have already have your camera turned on. So let's just wait for a little bit so that uh, the, the other participants who haven't turned on their camera yet can get prepared and turn on their camera. Diharapkan bagi seluruh peserta yang belum menghidupkan kameranya, boleh untuk menghidupkan kameranya karena kita akan mengambil foto bersama untuk dokumentasi. Oh, and the link to the feedback form and also the uh, present presence form will be shared by us later in the WhatsApp group. But after this webinar is over, so please just wait until this webinar is over. All right, maybe two minutes is over. So I think... Uh, just mount the camera and I will count to three and the committee who is uh, obliged to take the picture can take the pictures in the count to three. Okay, Miss Glory or Mr. Jordi, are you ready? 
Yes, please. Okay. Now, in count in the third count, please smile to the camera and do not move because I think because of the connection, internet connection of everyone uh, can be different. So I think it will take a little while to take a good picture. In three, two, one, smile. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for your participations and thank you so much for staying with us until the end. I hope you guys find this webinar interesting and helpful as much as I do. Well, moving on to the next session that is Q&A session. I am so honored to see that there are so many questions from the participants here. So, but because the time is limited. I have to read only some of your questions. I am so sorry, but I hope that the questions that the committee speak uh, can represent all of your questions here. All right. So I will read the first question. The first question is, uh, this is from Mr. Chandra. He is asking to both speakers to Mr. Glenn and Mr. Auzan. Uh, for example, there are brand names such as Kijang and Chiki and etc. How did you first become a lawyer in a specific service of law? For example, for Glenn, specifies in FinTech and cyber data. How did you find a career in that specific area? Okay, uh, so really, uh, Usually, uh, when you become a lawyer, uh, usually you're not the first person to come up with that topic. Not the original creator, unless you're the lawmaker or you're an academic. But if you're a practicing lawyer, um, when you have a brand, uh, doesn't mean that you're the first one to actually focus on those areas. But then here, uh, what I mean by have a personal brand on, on some areas, meaning that just like a doctor uh, or a teacher, you specialize on something, people will look up uh, lawyers for certain areas of law. So for example, when people think of personal data protection, they will think of, okay, in Indonesia, who are the, the, the best lawyers in this uh, area? And, and then people will start searching. And when your name doesn't come up on LinkedIn or or Google search uh, when you haven't written anything on that uh, topic or you haven't given any presentation on that topic, yeah, who would know that you're specializing on that topic? So, and also by specializing on certain topics, not becoming a generalist, uh, you're more well known, uh, you know, easily compared if you're you say that uh, okay, I can handle any kinds of cases. I can handle anything. You're a general practitioner. I wouldn't say it's, it's a bad thing to, to become a generalist, but then if you have personal brand, when people uh, mention Glenn, okay, people will think of, okay, Glenn is a blah, blah, blah lawyer, right? Uh, I, I hope that really uh, illustrates my point. Uh, I think that's all. Maybe Auzan can add something to that. I think I more or less agree with what Glenn has just said. I think brand name is just a brand. Uh, it does matter if it is really unique or different. But if there are other people who also bear the same name with you or with your brand name, I think um, it won't be, uh, it won't matter as much. Because I think what people will more appreciate is that the values and the qualities that you have that actually differentiate you from other people. So hence, the self-branding is on you to know yourself. Yeah, that, that's all I'm on. <laughs> All right, uh, Mr. Chandra, who asked this question, are you safe or is there anything that you would like to add or ask more? Okay, I guess not. So let's just proceed to the second question. The second question is from Merari Zahra. Uh, for Mr. Auzan, when you were in job seeking, did you find 
having a public international law background challenge to compete with other fresh graduate with more practical law focus or, or corporate and business law, private international law, etc. How did you start your current career? And also, did you get to practice the law you enjoy learning? Mm. A very interesting question. Um, yes, actually, um, actually, um, you don't get to actually um, reflect or apply directly on the idea of international law in legal career because I think it's very limited. Like you have to look at United Nations or uh, those kind of, of organizations. But it surely gives you uh, um, the advantage is that you know something that the other candidates don't know. So this is also how you create conversation, like I say, on the communication. You don't just talk about work. You also talk about um, the global things happening around the world. So it makes an interview session to be more fun. So in directly responding to the question whether it is hard to find a legal career if you have an international law background or degree background, um, it won't be that hard. But it's, it, it, uh, it's about how you can use what you've learned in the program in applying for a work. For example, um, the thing, the, I'm not sure about in Indonesia, but in Malaysia, um, the stigma is that uh, people um, tend to not hire fresh grad because you don't have enough experience. But how do these fresh graduates uh, gain experience if they're not given the chance to actually learn first? So those are the stigma that we young people should change from now. Um, you can be graduates in anything, but as long as you have the determination to learn in doing something, um, and you have good attitude, you have good soft skills, I don't see any um, difference or any ob obstacle to that. Uh, if I may share as well, uh, one of my team members in my group, Legal Compliance and Risk Management, one of us um, does not have any law degree or have any legal background. So he's from uh, International Business and Marketing. But because of the good attitude, the essence, the determination that he wants to learn about doing uh, compliance and risk management, and he has all the values and the qualities, um, it's more than just a, a particular degree. So it's about your self-branding as well. This is where self-branding matters. It's about how you converse to people, how you persuade people that without this particular degree, I can also do whatever other people can do. So that will be my more or less response to such question. Interesting question. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Auzan. Uh, is there anything the who is it from Miss Mirari? Is there anything you would like to add? Yes, if I would, um, if it's possible with the time, I would uh, love to ask one more question um, yes, to Mr. Glenn and also to Mr. Auzan. Thank you so much uh, for your answer before. Um, but regarding to what Mr. Glenn have said before, um, you mentioned that if we have the um, experience of becoming speakers in webinars or seminars, you said it's it should be something that we 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 see as our strength. Um, on the uh, I I myself is um, I'm pretty lucky to have some experiences becoming a speaker in webinars and seminars. But um, when it comes to self branding and building my CV, I find it um, confusing whether it is something that is relevant that uh, that I should put on my CV because just like what Mr. Ozen also mentioned before, you need to put things that are only relevant to things that you are um, aiming for. So do you have any advice on that? Thank you. Uh, so who's speaking? Um, Glenn, you wanna respond first? Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, I'll respond first. Uh, so, if you're participating in a webinar as a moderator in a topic other than law, for example, you can really mention that as a supplement uh, in your CV, stating that it, it demonstrates your skill as an excellent speaker, excellent moderator. You, you need to have excellent speaking skills and communication skills. And uh, you, know, you, you need to have a certain determination or knowledge on a certain topic. Although it's not law, but then it's a trans skill that will be you know highly valued by your employer but if uh, you're speaking in a webinar that is uh, on law and particularly corporate law or any law that 
uh, you're interested in and, and you're applying to a certain law firm specializing in certain topics that you're a moderator of, then it's, it's obviously very good. But if uh, the topic does not really relate to law, then you can say to, uh, you know, during the interview that, okay, I, I'm very used to moderating these kinds of webinars, although it's not about law, but, you know, I have a uh, good communication skill, blah, blah, blah. So that's uh, what I would say, uh, what I would answer. Thank you. Um, actually, more or less what I plan to say uh, is very similar to what Glenn said. Um, if I may add one thing, um, to, to have a good and healthy communication um, skills is very important. Because that's how you excel and showcase who you really are in a discussion. For example, in an interview, do remember it is not the other party really wanting to know you. I mean, no, it is the other party really want to know you. So it goes to whether how you carry yourself, how you create conversation, how you engage with your questions. And if they ask, um, for example, a, a, a very uh, typical and popular question, uh, Miss uh, Mira, for example, do you have any questions to us? So that is the moment that you have to be prepared. You have to do your study on what you plan to ask. So it can be, uh, the range can be from uh, company or legal firm related questions, or it can be as simple as, what do you think about the current um, humanitarian crisis in the Middle East? So these are the point that can actually make you uh, different than other people, that other candidates won't be asking those kind of questions, but you will be the first or among few who ask out of law firms or company related questions. But do ask something relevant. Do not, don't ask, oh, what is your favorite food? What, what do you like to play? I think that, that's not the correct quorum. But do ask something that will show who you really are. Your interest, for example. Let's say, for example, you are very keen. You are very passionate in human rights advocacy. Do ask. Mr. Glenn, um, what is your opinion or your perspective in the um, human rights crisis in the, in the States? It can be as simple as that, the conversation, the discussion point. Yeah, that's all. Thank you very much, much appreciated. Thank you. All right, if there's no more to add, I would like to proceed to the third question. The third question is from Muhammad Kalehyon. He's a Spanish, <laughs> he asked that, uh, until now, I cannot do my best to be better. Do you have any advice for someone like me to, to be a better law student? Because I feel like I want to be a lawyer, but I don't know how to make it happen. I think that he may need some encouragement for our two speakers, but I would like to say that uh, for two speakers, can you please keep it uh, simple and short because we're actually almost running out of time. Thank you. Okay, uh, so... Um, so the, 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 the crux of the question is really how to improve ourselves every day and uh, how to become a better lawyer, a better law student. I think uh, we need to set a goal. Uh, we need to know what we'll do in 10, 20 years time. Although it's very uh, unlikely to, to know what you'll become. But then if you have a vision and you have a mission, then uh, nothing is impossible and please have a role model. It's much easier if you, if you know that you can have a template of someone's career. But then again, please do not use this template to define yourself because after all, it's a personal brand. Uh, that's all for me. Mm, I once again agree with Glenn. Um, encouragement has to come from you, yourself because only you yourself know what's best for you, what do you enjoy doing, what you like uh, doing. But again, as I said, um, I was there once. I was there in the position that um, I wasn't sure whether this career or this degree is for myself. But my life principle is very simple. Um, do finish what I started. And then when I have that particular thing, then I'll decide what kind of dreams I want to pursue, what kind of opportunity I really want to endeavor with, into. So um, the, the, the best encouragement that I can give is that um, do know your strength, do know your um, weakness as well. Because out of all courses, your 
all programs in law degree, uh, there must be one particular subject that you are passionate in. So it, it can't be that you hate everything. So find that, follow the voices into that particular course of subject. Uh, you'll be fine. You will be fine. The fact that you are enrolled in law, law degree program um, at any universities um, that you are currently doing, um, you are already good enough. You can be better for sure. That's all. Amar, I think you muted yourself, so we cannot hear you. I'm sorry, I forgot. Okay, uh, let me for myself. Thank you so much to both Mr. Glenn, Mr. Auzan for the encouragement and to Mr. Muhammad Kalayon. Please trust yourself and please always believe that as long as you want to do it, you can achieve it. So don't look down on yourself. Uh, so I will give the last question. Uh, to both the speakers because our time has almost elapsed. Uh, this question is from Rahmaditya M. Putra. Hello, Mr. Auzan and Mr. Glenn Wijaya. Good afternoon. My name is Rahmaditya M. Putra, hereby known as Adit. I am a final year law student from Universe Pajajaran. I would like to ask a question for both speakers. I have a huge interest in World Trade Organization law, IPR and FDI transportation, and natural resources law. In spite of this, I put a strong emphasis on World Trade Organization law as my main interest. On contrast, I have researched several law firms, but the preference of WTO practice is not as much as other practice areas, such as, uh, such as but not limited to FBI, family law, or criminal law. Therefore, my question, my, my question is, is it better to put my interest in WTO law as my priority since it is my huge interest or I should learn other areas that it also my interest but not as huge as WTO seeing the practice of WTO law in Indonesia is not as huge as in Europe or North America. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, I'll start answering the question. Uh, I think uh, what he has undergone is similar like uh, my uh, experience um, when I graduated from Groningen, uh, I was uh, endowed with more knowledge on international law, public international law, rather than corporate law or even Indonesian law because that's a very international law focused degree. That's why I, I uh, returned to school, to law school, to get an Indonesian law degree to, to specialize in corporate law. Uh, but then again, um, I believe that the more, you know, the, the more you know about more stuff, uh, it's good. Uh, doesn't mean that if you now only know or specialize in WTO law, doesn't mean you can't really learn anything else. Uh, because uh, I'm sure that many lawyers will say this, uh, once you start working, you'll be given assignments and tasks that uh, require you to research on certain areas of law. So back again, uh, it's the transferable skill, uh, the research skill, the, the, the hunger for knowledge that you can apply uh, when you work uh, in a law firm that will uh, separate you from the rest. And, and that, uh, you know, your, in, your initial interest in WTO law or any other field of law that is not currently relevant to the law firm that you're applying to, for example, uh, doesn't mean that you should leave uh, altogether WTO uh, law. But then uh, probably you can channel that to your organization or you can start a discussion, a webinar on that topic. Or one day you'll be moving from a law firm to, uh, to a specialized uh, government institution dealing with WTO law uh, or any other, or even the WTO itself. Uh, but my point is, um, do not leave WTO law altogether, but then it's okay. Uh, I'll be pragmatic here. Uh, you need to... If, if, if you're certain that you're going to apply to a law firm, a law firm Jakarta, uh, typically you need to have uh, on good knowledge on FDI, on uh, the corporate law, the Undang-Undang 40-2007, uh, and Kahwa um, Perdata, the, the civil code. These kinds of things, uh, you need to know. Uh, I mean, otherwise you won't be accepted uh, or have a little chance to be accepted as an associate. 
So uh, I was once in your position. I was very interested in public international law, not very much on private law in Indonesia. But then uh, after I uh, moved to practice of law, and when you when you work in certain law firms, you'll be directed to certain areas of law. That's the the practice areas of that firm. You have no choice to uh, learn, uh, unlearn, re learn and and relearn something. So, yeah, uh, the point is to keep learning. Uh, learning is never ending. Maybe this year you'll focus on WTO law, but once you work, maybe you'll become master of private law, or criminal law, depending on the firm that you're working for or company. So just keep learning. That's all for me. I agree with Glenn. Um, I'll, I'll just add uh, um, um, a little bit. Um, I enjoyed uh, international trade and finance before as well during my studies. But um, it is just a, a part or an ambit of law that you can learn from time to time. So don't restrict or impede yourself that because you like a certain particular law, those are the areas of law that you have to practice. Um, it is wider in reality. For example, you can do corporate contracts um, uh, as simple as merging acquisition or equity deals. Let's say that you enter a particular legal firm or company that, 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 that deal with this kind of matter, corporate, corporate matter, um, transactional. This, the idea that you already learn or have foundation in WTO and uh, international trade will be advantageous to you because you will, be manage, you will manage to advise your clients or your uh, company, A, we are dealing with other countries. So this is where the idea of WTO or ITF come in. So um, do not um, keep learning, but do not impede that all. Because I like this, there's no firm that offer me WTO or ITF in specific, that you cannot join those firms or companies. But remember, as long as you know contracts, um, the foundation is there. So it is about the learning curve or the opportunities the firms and the companies have in dealings with their counterparts. The time will come, inshallah. Just, just wait and see. Be patient. Over to you, Amal. Okay, thank you so much to both Mr. Glenn and Mr. Auzan for the amazing answers to all the questions. Uh, although I see that there are still so many questions given to us, but I have to say that unfortunately we have to cut this q &A session until here because the time has elapsed and some of the participants has already left too. It has been three hours we are we spent together today. I feel like we are becoming a little closer. All right, uh, it has been really fun with you guys. And I hope that this webinar can be helpful and be memorable to everyone here because personally, I find this webinar as my first experience becoming a moderator is really amazing. So I would like to say thank you and I feel really honored to be with you guys today. Uh, before I close this event, I would like to give a really brief conclusion about what we have shared today with our speakers. The first one is that there are so many ways that we can do some branding such as doing uh, such as joining different organization also and also joining different competitions and also do not forget to pick up the good marks in our classes because it is also important also you have to at least try to do uh, what is it job internships and also uh, both of our speakers uh, told us to be confident in ourselves and also to be prepared in what are we going to apply for in the future uh, and don't forget that we have to always leave good impressions to everyone but do not afraid to make mistakes because only from mistakes that we can learn to be better in the future uh all right uh i feel really sorry because of the youtube viewers cannot uh, participate in this webinar as much as we do they could not ask questions because uh time has limited Hope you guys enjoyed uh, but I would like to share something with you guys today. I read something really uh, motivational to me this morning on my Instagram. If I'm not mistaken, it was words from Mary Kay, Mary Kay Ash, I forgot. But she said that, uh, do not, don't ever limit yourself because uh, many people limit themselves to only what they think they can do. But we can always go as long as as far as what our mind tells us so do not ever stop dreaming and do not ever stop believing please just trust yourself and everything will just 
go well. <laughs> yes, I believe that. Uh, so I think it is time for me to end this event. I'm really sad because it is so much fun. Uh, I would like to say thank you for all the participants who have joined us today and also for both speakers who have shared with us their amazing experiences and also their helpful tips and information. Uh, we really appreciate uh, the both of them. And also I would like to say sorry if there are some of my words or actions that may offend you in some kind of way that I do not realize. I am really sorry. And also I sincerely hope that we all can meet each other again in, of course, in a better opportunity. Uh, well, I think that's all for me. Thank you so much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The Google form about the attendees will be sent by us through our WhatsApp groups. You have to fill it in case you want to get your certificates before 5 p.m. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I love you too. <laughs>